Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. Fairly early on in Plato's dialogue, the, the Mino, where Socrates is talking primarily with Mino, and also the few other characters who, who pop in from point to point, there's a paradox or a dilemma articulated by Socrates. He's saying that Mino himself is about to fall into it and that they don't want to fall into it. And it's, it's often called the Mino paradox or sometimes the Mino dilemma after the, the dialogue, after the character. Now, Plato and Socrates, they're not the first people to actually articulate this. Uh, Socrates actually calls it a debater's trick, so it's, it's out there in the Greek culture, and it's most likely coming from, from some of the sophists. Um, and it's got an interesting, ingenious structure. When we say that it's a dilemma, what we mean is that it's, it's a very brief argument, and it says you can either go this way or you can go this way. You can't pick both, and you can't get out of picking one of them and you're not going to like either one, so you're screwed no matter what. That's what a dilemma is, properly speaking. And if we want to say that it's a paradox, on the other hand, what we mean, it means that it goes against or around or in some way jars with doxa, that is, you know, common belief, common opinion. And so a paradox is something that somebody says that sounds reasonable, but also makes us say, well, that can't possibly be true, but I'm not quite sure how to get out of it. So, what's interesting with the Mino dilemma is three things. One is, what is it? You know, what's its structure? We'll look at that first. And then second, um, what are the ways that we could actually approach this? What are the ways that we could, we could answer this, get out of it, refute it? Socrates proposes one. There's several others that we could possibly look at. And then the third thing that I think is often overlooked in this dialogue is that Socrates says, look, if you buy into this, it's actually going to lead to something bad and not something bad uh, on the horns of the dilemma, but rather in your attitude and your behavior. So let's look at the first part first. The way the dilemma goes is you can't, it says you can't seek or inquire about anything, uh, and why not? Well, you can't carry out any sort of intellectual or even practical investigation. Because if you know the thing that you're actually trying to figure out, trying to seek, trying to inquire about, then you already know it. There's, there's no need to actually go looking for it. You've already got it. It's sort of like saying, I'm sitting in my chair and I want to figure out how to get to my chair. And then somebody says to me, look, you're already there. Or, or people do this all the time. You know, they, they walk around, I can't figure out what I did with my glasses. And then somebody says, well, you, you, you've got them on your face. Now, sometimes people actually are wearing them and say, I can't find my glasses. I've done that more than once. So that's one horn of the dilemma. If you already know it, then there's no seeking it, and there's no looking for anything more. You already know it. On the other hand, if you don't know it, well, then you have no idea how to start. You don't know where to look for it. You don't know what you're looking for. So, you know, you could go looking in general, but you have no idea whether you're going to find it or how to recognize it when you do find it because you don't know it. And if we, if we think about this, um, there's some flaws here that I think you can, you can see fairly quickly. Um, Socrates, interestingly enough, now we get to the second thing that we want to look at, Socrates doesn't take the easier way in saying, well, maybe you know something halfway, 
or maybe you have partial knowledge, maybe you know enough about a topic to actually know where to go look for it or what you would you know be looking for or how to recognize better and worse knowledge about it and we generally do that in terms of you know background knowledge or other other knowledge that we have um, you know if you think for example of going to Wikipedia to, to gain more information about something. And, and, you know, a lot of people rail on Wikipedia, bad source. It's actually gotten quite a lot better over, over time. Still wouldn't use it as a primary source for anything. But it's a good place to direct you to the primary sources that you might actually get primary, you know, right up front, dealing with the thing itself, knowledge from. So Wikipedia is a knowledge device or knowledge technology in, in a certain way. You might actually pose this, this question to Wikipedia and say, oh dear Wikipedia, how can you possibly know anything? You started out knowing nothing, which was really the case 10 years ago, and um, you, don't, you, you can't even be sure whether your, your entries are correct, whether your knowledge actually counts as knowledge. And, you know, Wikipedia is an approximative process, right? Um, the peer review thing, there's all sorts of debates about whether it's really peer reviewed or not, and you know, there's all sorts of complaints made about it. But let's just go along with the theory for, for a moment. The idea is that you've got some background knowledge and you can use that to figure out what you're talking about. Um, to be able to recognize, hey, this sounds plausible, this is probably going to get me to where I want to go. So that would be one way to respond to this. Uh, another way that you could respond to it would be to think in terms of a type of knowledge that Plato discusses but always wants to assimilate to something that we might call discursive or intellectual knowledge, and that's the knowledge that goes into a craft or art or skill. Um, you know, playing an instrument, for example. If you want to learn a new song and you want to know how to play it, that's more than just being able to read the notes. It's not just about how to translate that into, you know, physical behaviors. I'm, you know, pretending I'm playing a banjo or, or bass is what I used to play. It's, it's about um, something which integrates the body, integrates the mind, integrates our, our aesthetic sensibilities, and that can, that can admit of degrees, right? You, can, you start out, when you first learn a song, you're kind of clunky with it, you make mistakes. Do you know the song? Well, you kind of know the song, but not really. And now you actually play it a lot, you practice it, you, you work over the rough parts, and you can reliably play it, but you, you still don't have, you know, the sort of feel and facility that comes with complete mastery. You know the song, um, but... Do you know it as fully as you could? If the Mino Paradox were true, then knowing it at that level would be all there is, and, and there'd be nothing more that you could gain. But true musicianship, particularly when it comes to interpreting a, a song, means having a kind of mastery that is also a type of knowledge, and you know, it develops because you do keep on seeking, you do keep on, on inquiring into what you already do know. Um, we could say the same thing about, about persons. You know, the fact that I know my best friend or know my wife or know my cousin doesn't mean that I know them entirely. And yet I would still, in fact, know where to go to find out information, most information, from them. And I would understand how to interpret it in the process of inquiry. So th there's another way in which the Mino Paradox fails. What's Socrates' response? Socrates actually says, ah, I've got just the right answer for this doctrine of recollection, which we're going to do another core concept about um, because it's, it's its own topic. Before we were born, we actually saw all the things that we can have knowledge of. And when we are learning about them, what we're actually doing is remembering. We already have the, the knowledge in an implicit or innate or, you know, some other way along those lines, manner. 
And so we already do know things. We think that we don't know them, but we do know them. And as we work through them, they become a little bit more clear over time. And therefore, we, we actually should seek what it is that we want to know about. But we need to seek, you might say, within. If you want to know what justice is, the answer is within us, but it takes a lot of work to bring it out. Um, now, the last thing that's very interesting about this discussion is Socrates says, you really don't want to buy the Mino Paradox, not just because, you know, it, it, it's not true. He has a more pragmatic approach. If we accept this Mino Paradox, we're going to become lazy. We're not going to be the opposite, which would be being courageous or being persevering in our quest for knowledge. We, you know, we, we are able to recognize there's a lot of things that I don't know. There's a lot of ways in which I, my knowledge could be a lot better, a lot more developed than it, than it currently is. I'm not even sure if I know the things that I know or if it's just true opinion. So the, the examined life in large part consists in trying to further our knowledge, trying to increase our store of knowledge. And if we were to buy this Mino paradox, then we'd be sort of paralyzed. Uh, we, we wouldn't actually continue this quest to learn anything and perhaps in the process get to know anything.